welcome back to the lecture series in NPTEL on bioelectricity. So, we have introduced the course in the first lecture and in the second lecture we went ahead and um, started with a graphical uh, representation of the course, the way it will progress. So, in that process we started with the inanimate object or inanimate object from biological origin. We talk about how the thermal regulation is being done, we will be discussing it under the following heads like you know the system identification, the biological or electrochemical bioelectrical phenomena and then we will be talking about the instrumentation needed and the advanced applications. In that process we finished with the inanimate uh, world what we will be dealing in the course. We talked about uh, the insect world we talked about the plant world. What we have not talked yet is about the animal bioelectricity, the world which is most explored among all these, where uh, there are a lot of applications for biomedical um, perspective as well as for different form of prosthesis and everything. So, today we will start with uh, the graphical representation of the animal electricity or animal bioelectricity what we will be dealing. So, once again let us coming back to the way we started with the other ones. So, we will make four columns system identification. So, system identification will be our first column. identification, bioelectrical phenomena, okay, and instrumentation, then we talked about the advanced application. this we are all doing under the title of animal bioelectrical phenomena. Okay. So, so again following the same scheme of things, so we will identify the system we will talk about the phenomena, we talk about the instrumentation and then we will talk about the advanced application. So, the first question which we will attempt to answer here is the origin of the bioelectrical phenomena. In other words, the cellular electricity at the cellular level how electricity is being generated. So, that needs us to go in depth with the membrane structure of the membrane, membrane potential and the flow of charges across the membrane which leads to the generation of electricity. Okay. So, start off with we will we'll study about the membrane and please ensure to keep this chart in mind all the time. Okay. Membrane structure which leading to potential difference or delta V charge transfer or charge transport across the membrane. across the membrane okay. and the kind of instrumentation. So, here there are a few more things. So, whenever we talk about the membrane structure and the charge transport across the membrane, we have to realize that uh, these are semi permeable membranes we are talking about and they regulate the flow of charges especially or exclusively these are ionic charges which are flowing and 
they are gated through the membranes using the smallest unit, which helps in the gating that is the ion channels. So, we will be studying about the ion channels, which is the smallest known entity, which helps in or which regulates the flow of ion across a membrane. Okay. So, we will be talking about the, the membrane structure, we will talk about the structure of the ion channels. And within the ion channels, we will talk about voltage gated ion channels. I am just putting ion channels as I C and ligand gated ion channels. Okay. I just got into the other column, so do not worry. We will. So, membrane is the most I should say the most primary level, where the electrical impulses gets generated and from there it keeps on traveling through from one membrane to another to the third to the fourth likewise. Okay. And the major techniques, which have evolved in the study of membranes includes voltage clamp studies, current clamp studies, patch clamp studies, single channel current measurements. So, talking about the instrumentation out here, we will talk about voltage clamp and I will come to the exact meaning of all those things. Voltage clamp, current clamp, patch clamp, within the patch clamp we have whole cell recording. talking about. So, there is a whole classification, which I will be coming to this whole electrochemical or electrophysiological measurements, extracellular, intracellular, within intracellular you have the whole series of patch clamp, voltage clamp, current clamp, whereas in the, in the extracellular also you could have those things, but using extracellular electrodes. Okay. So, then we will be talking about extracellular recordings, which will include your micro, this is just the sign of micro, micro electrode array, MEA or field effect transistors. FET. Okay. So, there is a, so this section what you see the, the voltage clamp, current clamp, patch clamp, whole cell recording, extracellular recording and by the way all these others fall under the, most of them falls under the intracellular recording. So, within the membrane structure, we talk about the we will talk about the potential difference and most importantly we will have to talk about to start off with actually we will have to talk about the out here how membrane potential is actually generated. This is the first and foremost question, which we needed to answer. And from there, so now we have a potential difference, this potential difference leads to a charge transport across the membrane. And in this whole game of understanding the membrane structure, and I should put it more correctly, membrane structure and dynamics, because there are other events which are taking place. Let me move on to the next slide, where we will be talking about what are the other events which are involved in this process. So, I will talk about the membrane. So, back to where we are, okay. what is the membrane structure, membrane dynamics. We will be talking about 
nurst equation then we'll be talking about goldman hodgkin and cuts which is also called ghk equation which is nothing but a extension of the nurst equation so here we'll be talking about the counter forces of diffusion and delta v the potential difference and the diffusion how that you know how these forces are regulating the or other we can say the the you can also say charge mobilization in other words what we want what we wanted to say or what i wanted to highlight here is that say for example you have across the membrane something like this you have positive charges negative charges so and 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 this is the membrane okay so essentially what we are trying to highlight will be trying to highlight here is that under the normal diffusion say for example, you have 100 molecules of NaCl sodium chloride on one side, you have 10 molecules of sodium chloride of one another side and if you allow the free diffusion eventually what will happen 100 on this side 10 on this side 100 plus 10 makes it 110, 110 divided by 2 which makes it 55, 55 on both sides there will be 55, 55 molecules, but think of a situation where you have 100 tail molecules of NaCl. So, which dissociates into Na plus C L minus charges on the other side also Na plus C L minus charges and apart from it there are few other charge molecules and the membrane which is there is semi permeable it would not allow everything to pass through then how the membrane will balance itself across across it two sides that is what we will be talking about the dynamics part of the membrane and because that is those are the governing uh, processes which regulates the flow of ions across a semi permeable membrane and here I let me go back to the previous slide. So, whenever we talk about these kind of biological membrane essentially we are talking about semi permeable membrane ok. So, we will talk about the membrane dynamics and then we will talk about the once again with respect to individual cells will have to come and there will be talking about ok fine we will talk about the nerve cells which are excitable cells so in the body there are three kind of excitable cells nerve cells cardiac cells and few other cells on of course, the, the let us just see the excitable cells or electrically excitable cells of the body electrically excitable membranes or or you can call it cells, but so the membrane is covering the cell cells of the body ok. So, there are this you have the nerve cell you have muscle mostly skeletal which is more pronounced and you have the other muscle which is within the muscle. Uh, let me do it like this. Uh, okay. I think now I am doing it right. Okay, cardiac and skeletal. Essentially, we will be talking about nerve bioelectricity. 
skeletal by electricity and cardiac by electricity. So, these are on the leftmost column, if I had to talk about the identification of system. So, this is the broad identification of the system and mind it these systems are all interlinked. So, for example, this nerve is regulating. So, there is an interaction that falls under the interface zone of this, where we will be talking about nerve muscle junction and how to study that. Or so for example, if we pick this up, the way nerve regulating cardiac muscle and in this situation we are talking about the skeletal muscle of course, okay. cardiac muscle regulation. Okay. So, while we will start with the structure of the membrane that will be our generic structure, where we will talk about this is how the membrane looks, this is how the potential difference across is being maintained and these are the different smallest unit ion channels which are regulating and from that generic introduction we will move on to the specialized cell types, which is nerve cells like all the three excitable cells muscle skeletal muscle the cardiac muscle. So, coming back to the previous slide where we were, so where we actually started. So, within so second let me, so this is this is the overall outline to start off with this thing and then we talk about the membrane dynamics, what will be studying in the dynamics part and then we talk about the yeah. So, in this classification what we are going to study in the nerve cells. So, within the nerve cells we will talk about the impulse propagation, this is exceptionally important. Then we will talk about the um, once again. Okay, we will talk about uh, the synaptic connections and in that whole process with the nerve system, we will talk about memory and learning. because these are some of the most important bioelectrical phenomena. Here we will talk about uh, the spinal cord computation and injury. Then we will among these nerve cells we will talk about some of the special senses Here comes the special senses. We will talk about the eyes, the ears, then nose, and these have very straightforward output whenever we talk about the eyes, ears and nose, because these are the organs which has opened up the should say open up the scope for prosthesis, because the first prosthesis which was done was the cochlear implant. So, from here we will move on to, to essentially two from here we will talk about that among the advanced application about cochlear implant, which is an 8 electrode system. Then in the eyes we will talk about a retinal prosthesis, a 
this is in the case of nose in human being that is not as strong as the rodents. It is more of a research interest of understanding what are the different odors and they have of course, profound implication in uh, uh, perfume industry and all other places. So, they are more like an inspiration for uh, uh, odorant sensors. Okay. So, for the sensor devices okay. and within this part spinal cord injury, we will talk about among that advanced application, we will talk about different electrode stimulation or and sorry spinal cord chip likewise. Then in the case of memory and learning, this is uh, one of the most challenging frontier, where we will be talking about different deep brain stimulation techniques, different uh, research which is currently going on to replace a part of the brain with a chip to you know handle situations of like Alzheimer's or some other neurodegenerative diseases or uh, we will talk about uh, how a brain can cross talk with a robot and all those kind of things. So, it will start with uh, stimulation. So, one of the areas then implanting electrodes then you have this implanting brain chips these are the futuristic dream of mankind so okay so what essentially transpire out of all these things is this, that we have to understand the very basic fundamental ideas first, especially in terms of if you go back to the previous slide, we have to understand the membrane potential, we have to understand the charge transport across the membrane, we have to understand the dynamics of the ion channels and we have to understand the how the Nernst equation, Goldman Hodgkin cuts equation and other all other things are regulating the whole process. But then the next phase, which is the most challenging phase of all this game is something, if you look here. So, if, if you look very concentrated on this site, like if you really look very carefully to this site, this whole part is taking us to a different zone. That is basically what we are talking about is you are implanting or you are introducing something inside your body in the form of an electrode or in the form of a chip, but mostly at the form of an electrode, form of an electrode. Okay. So, that requires a different kind of expertise. So, we will just enumerate bit of it, so that you appreciate that why these areas are so very challenging. So, what I will do, I will try to do it uh, more on a diagrammatic so, say for example, just think of it, if this is your brain okay, and this is the spinal cord moving in. Okay. Now, we are introducing an electrode into the system like this or say for example, uh, electrode or maybe a surface electrode like this. So, the very moment, so and these are, I am just putting the sign as E minus as the electrode and this is of course, the brain and 
the spinal cord. Okay. So, the very moment you are introducing something into the brain or into spinal cord, you are introducing a foreign object into the system. And essentially, how these individual cells are going to interact with that foreign object is the most fundamental challenging problem. And that falls under the, the field of cell electrode interface. Cell electrode, one second, one second, cell electrode interface. This interface is extremely important because electrode, this is the zone where you look how diverse the field becomes. This is the zone which needs your understanding of materials. Chemistry of the material, then you have to understand the electrochemistry, then you have to understand the which is the interface area out here, that interaction which is the bio compatibility and then long term impact. So, this whole field of cell electrode interface is exceptionally challenging and that is where lies the catch. What are the newer and newer electrode materials, which mankind could develop, which could help us in progressing into the field of man machine interface or neuroprosthesis and neuroelectric interface much more easily. It should, it should, it should seem in very easily without any problem. So, that is a whole field in its own merit and that needs different kind of training to understand. So, this is one thing which we will be highlighting as we will be talking about microelectrode arrays, we will be talking about different electrode materials which are being used. So, that is the part where we will be talking about the whole instrumentation and everything. And talking about its implication if you look at it, we have already talked about if you go back or out here. Yeah. So, the brain stimulation, implanting. So, these are all material things electrode stimulation, spinal cord, retinal prosthesis, cochlear implant, sensor devices. So, if you look at all of them, they all need electrode materials. So, on one hand, we are dealing with a biological system, but one on the other hand, you need a deep in depth understanding of material science, otherwise it is exceptionally challenging even to handle a single problem in this field. So, now what we will do, we will talk about few more other areas. So, this zone talking about nerve muscle junction, understanding nerve muscle junction. So, this could have profound impact in understanding the field of robotics could we have a robot which make the movement of the arms so gently it could do like this it could waltz through it could move through it could do like this all these different degree of freedom this privilege we have because we are under the continuous control of the nervous system which helps us so this is the area the nerve muscle junction what i try to highlight out here has profound impact in future robotics, future robots may use some of the algorithms what are being. So, basically first of all you have to understand, we have to understand translate this algorithms of body. Body algorithms have to translate it into a for a machine algorithm. 
to execute the job. Okay. So, this is how the understanding of nerve muscle junction could be of big help. Other than that, there is another side of this whole field that is the case of patient with amputation. Say for example, a person has say amputated hand or amputated legs. Could we? So, say for example, here is a situation. Say for example, uh, uh, here is a human being. Okay. This is an intact human being. Now, there is an amputation. This is gone. Now, we can put an artificial, artificial limb out here. But how this limb will? cross talk with the brain, what will be the signals which will be put here, that all falls under understanding these algorithms, how nerves are controlling the muscle. Could we have, could we translate this in terms of some kind of electrical gadget here, after understanding the algorithm or electrical interfacing. Could we do that for an amputee patient? So, these are some of the fundamental things which we needed to understand while we will be talking about the nerve muscle interaction from a very application oriented point of view. We will do the very little bit biology, but we will be more concerned about how those signals could be translated in terms of a um, computer algorithm that we could design something, which could execute if not to the level of efficiency of a normal human being, but you know to some degree. So, that the life of this individual becomes much more easier. So, that is one re, uh, area we will be kind of highlighting here as an advanced application, while talking about this part of the story nerve and cardiac muscle. So, these are some of the understanding which has profound impact in, in extra corporal devices. For those of you who are not aware of extra corporal devices, these are devices you have to check the spelling probably my spelling is wrong here. Uh, these are the devices which are used outside the body. Say for example, somebody the best example is this, somebody is having a kidney, kidney problem fine, the kidney is unable to you know, purify the blood. So, what they do they put an artificial kidney outside the body and they bypass the fluid which moves through that device and purifies the blood and put it back in your body. So, they pretty much carry the device with you or when you are lying down. So, it depending on how fast it has to be taken care. So, this extra corporal device uh, devices are fairly prominent in before even we have a very ready prosthesis out there. So, this is one of the root. So, these nerve cardiac interaction could have such, uh, such a scope apart from it understanding is could help us to develop the synth, uh, artificial heart, which currently only Apcor is the only one company in the world which is doing so, but there is lot of room, lot of understanding. Apart from it, there is another area which is the most prominent area currently is the area of pacemakers. One second, where basically. So, the pacemaker, pacemaker is nothing, but the heart has a rhythm by which the electrical impulses are being transmitted from one part like from one side of the heart to the other end from one I should say from one corner to the other corner. Okay. So, that pace is set by the specific cells or the specific circuit within the within the heart and those are called pacemaker cells. 
So, say for example, for some reason or other these pacemaker cells goes uh, haywire, they were bad, they were not functioning. So, what to do? How to bypass the problem? The only way to bypass the problem is that you put a synthetic pacemaker on the surface of the skin out here, which set the tone for the conduction to take place. And, and there is a technical term though for it. So, basically heart is divided into two, two system which functions in, in complementing each other. One is called the conduction system, which is basically the pacemaker system and other one is called the contraction system, which actually executes all this you know the heartbeat and all those kind of things. Okay. So, if the conduction system goes bad, how to you know ensure that we are doing fine. So, that is where comes the whole field of pacemaker and pacemaker implantation is a very common process currently, but there is a lot of room for improvement of pacemaker, because this is another thing which is very similar to what I drew for you is something like this. So, where you are putting electrode like this. So, here essentially what you are doing if, if, if this is your this is the heart with the four chambers. So, essentially what you are doing at the surface of the of the skin you are putting an stim something like this. So, this is essentially is the story of pacemakers, which is nothing but a signal generator. So, here the electrode is not really picking up signal, it is generating signal at a certain frequency and a certain wavelength. So, that is the other area where there is enormous scope of understanding and apart from it the way these rhythms are moving across the heart, the way these uh, waves are moving out here, the propagation of the wave. So, this propagation could be dealt in the field of ECG or EKG. So, we will talk more on this on C stand for cardio electrocardiogram, electrocardiogram or K is for the German cardio. So, this is something which all of you must have seen that this is the kind of traces whenever you see a screen and that based on that there are intervals like you know P, Q, R, S, T likewise you know. So, we will be talking about those electrocardiograms and how those electrocardiograms are being interpreted and what are their significance and how that helps the doctor to decide whether this individual needs a pacemaker or not. So, these are the things which we will be studying in the cardiac system. So, we have talked about. So, the way we started is go back. So, we talked about the rule, we are talking about the membrane structure and dynamics and how the potential is generated. The potential difference leading to the charge transport across the membrane. We talk about the voltage gated ion channels, we will talk about the ligand gated ion channels and in this whole section of techniques, we will talk about all the major techniques we will be dealing out here. I, as I told you that we have a section on the techniques. One second, okay, yeah. Then we will be talking about the dynamics part, where I highlighted that we will be talking mostly about nurse equation and how this is being governed, the governing dynamics for this whole process. Then we will be talking about the nerve, within the nerve cells we will talk about the nerve propagation, synaptic connection, learning and memory, spinal cord computation and injury and the special senses, which are exceptionally important for our survival, the eyes, ears and nose and simultaneously the retinal prosthesis cochlear implant. 
and uh, sensory devices respectively. From here we will talk about the electrically within this classification we have this nerve cells out here, the skeletal muscle, you have the cardiac and we will talk about individually and how those could be used for amputation patient, amputee patients or in robotics and then we will talk about the electrode implant and especially within the cardiac and how the EKG traces could be used to understand the pacemaker whether the person needs a pacemaker or not. And here I highlighted that how this cell electrode interface demands your understanding of material, its biocompatibility, its long term impact and the electrochemistry of the material and in that same line there is something called the corrosion and then there the fidelity of signal how long the signal they are because the thing is that whenever the so you have to realize here in this diagram whenever this electrode is inside so essentially what is happening if I redraw this situation it is like this. So, if I represent the cell by a green color like this, you have the electrode as red color like this. Okay. So, this is your electrode and this is your cell. So, at this interface zone, at this interface zone, it is a very dynamic zone. This is the zone where this cell what you see out here is secreting a lot of things and the surrounding fluid is acting with this electrode. And because of this gap, first of all there is a gap, you could see that there is a gap. This gap influences the signal, the fidelity of signal. This is one thing this gap is very good at doing. Apart from it, what happens? Over a period of time, this cell is secreting as these arrows are showing the secretion these secretion could if you kind of make a uh, slightly more uh, bigger image of this it will be like this the, if this is the electrode over a period of time what you will see is out here you will essentially see that there will be coating of something like this and still the cell is out here and this gap may keep on increasing and that definitely reduce the fidelity of the signal what is reaching to the electrode. Okay. So, these are the some of the stuff what we are going to deal with in the cell electrode interface which is exclusively uh, it is a very challenging area and continuously there is research going on I will try to give you the feed of the different research which has been done. Apart from it, we will talk about some of the, so I told you that we will be talking about lot about the bioenergy. So, what we will do this is one area which I have not really highlighted while showing the scheme of things. So, in the scheme of things I told you that you know, we have these under the four columns in the graphical representation. So, we will talk about in that among the system identification some of the ancient molecules, okay. some of the very ancient molecules with profound biological and electrical potential. So, some of the molecules we will be dealing here will be some of the semiconductor molecules like sulphides. We will talk about them, we will pick up one different section something like we will talk about FES 2, one of the major one we will be talking about FES 2 and we will talk about its uh, solar cell potential. And the reason why I pick up FES 2 because these are iron sulfur clusters are common in the membrane.
they are pretty much integral part of the membrane. And we will talk in depth about what are the advancement which has been made. Because mind it among the first semiconductor material which were developed, which was kind of discovered was galena, which was nothing but lead sulphide. So, sulphide has remained very much an integral part of our development. So, this is one section which will be separate out. So, so here of course, again under the same classification we will talk about system identification, the phenomenon and instrumentation what will be needing. So, that will remain pretty much the same instrumentation and advanced application. And within the advanced application is our this section which I actually did not. This is the past part which will be in the advanced application and phenomena is of course the light sensitive molecule. And as we'll move through this, you will realize that why I picked up this particular molecule. It has some very unique unique properties which is far better than the silicon based electronics, what we are currently uh, so much involved in it. Okay. So, this is the overall layout the first three classes what I told you that I will be introducing you to the into the course. So, these are the first uh, one, let me do me let me just uh, just let me do you a favor let me open up my first lecture to yeah. So, this is what I wanted to show you guys here. Yeah, so, this is the introductory part of the module, which I just now I finished with you people. The first three class, two to three class, what I devoted on introducing you to the whole subject. So, this is where all those three graphical representation and everything comes introduction and graphical representation of the subject. Now, we will move on to, so this part is all taken care now. Now, we will pick up one by one all this what you are seeing in section 2 section and every time I will come back, I will just see how far I have reached in this whole scheme of things what you see in front of you now. The first three lectures are gone. So, now we move on to, so we will we'll make a call whether we are moving to section, because as I have told you we can pick up this, 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 this anything at any point, we can again come back. So, we will we'll keep it very lucid, very simple and my expectation is very clear here, just your basic high school or whatsoever you studied and we will stick there, we will not go anywhere beyond it, because the whole idea is to appreciate electricity across nature. It is not about you know knowing high end uh, equations out here or you know very intricate phenomena. It is about first of all what it needed is that you have to love the subject, you have to appreciate it and once you start loving the subject, then you get in depth into it, you like this part, okay, you will get, get into it. So, the whole philosophy of this course is appreciate it, appreciate all over nature, there are so many beautiful things which are happening, it is just you have to try to look at it. Okay. So, now, I will end my module 1, where I basically introduce you to wide range of bioelectrical phenomena and now I will pick up one by one and I will expose you to the different events. Thanks a lot.